so well, so well. I liked Nashville. I thought it was, it's a big city, but it felt like a small town. We were there for, for just, just over three weeks and had weekends off, so we took a trip to Memphis and, you know, went to lots of country bars. The reason I went was just specifically for Mark Nevers. I mean, he could have lived in any city and I would have gone there to record with him. I was keen in this record when we had different musicians and a different engineer for the most part that I had a feeling that would dictate the sound and change the sound to a certain extent. So with the instrumentation, I fell in love with organs on this record. There's a lot of organs and a lot of kind of more lush, textural, droney sounds, which we have never had so much before. I think that was something that, that ended up colouring the record quite a lot. Swimming in the lake, it's like a well, a well. And there's some things I felt I just couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell Before I went to Nashville, I emailed Mark. I asked him whether he had certain instruments in his house, to which he was like, one word answer of yes, no matter what I asked him for, which was kind of true. He had this incredible array of different things. And I also told him that I would like someone to play some extra guitar and play some bass and play some extra piano or, or whatever, whatever instruments we thought we might need at the time. And yeah, he said that he had a lot of friends that would do that. And it turned out that those people were people like Tony Crow from Lamb Chop, Lamb Chop and um, Matt, Matt Swanson, who's also in Lamb Chop, and William Tyler, who plays in the Silver Jews and in Lamb Chop. They were very generous and very comfortable and um, plus I was really excited to have them play because I'm big fans of both of those bands so that was exciting. I feel like it's the most collaborative album I've made in that regard. So I have records sound like covered in bird noises and dogs barking and it's a, a very kind of outdoor affair. I just don't like things to sound processed or affected. That was the main um, thing I liked about working with these kinds of musicians is of course they don't want it to sound like that either so it's it's nice it's like finding a little little friend you know. Yeah I always write a song on my on my guitar or on a piano um, and I think I have more of a sense of the song, the feeling of the song rather than specific instruments. And a lot of the time I would think of a specific instrument and I might be completely wrong. And that's why I mean, we throw a lot of things at it usually. We would go in and, and try, you know, three or four different, different ways of, of attacking it in terms of instruments. I think that I listen to the lyrics and I think about what kind of the mood it is and then we try and create that with different sounds. Something caught in the back of my throat A word is a word that I've had no luck A stove of broken Usually it's the things you don't expect are going to work, work best, you know, which I find a sort of constantly nice surprise when it comes to music. The experimental aspects that are on this record, um, like the bicycle wheel that's in The Time It Takes, for me it was kind of hilarious because it's this song that's this really honky-tonk piano line and it's the song about breaking hearts and people falling off buildings and stuff and it's, it's, it has a very serious subject matter but the song itself sounds so kind of clunky and naive. When we were recording that it just sounded like it needed something to emphasise that kind of ridiculous contrast between the lyrics and the music and that was when Nevers thought that it would be a good idea to have this bicycle wheel with a playing card in it as 
I don't know, it, to me it sounds like the guy falling off the building in the lyrics. After I finished recording with Mark, I came back to Australia and, um, and went down to the Kangaroo Valley in New South Wales. And Tony Dupay, who is the guy that produced my first two albums and who I've done everything um, with, he ended up doing some beautiful string and horn arrangements that wound up on four or five songs on this record. So it, to me it has a very cross-continental feeling. I mean, it has a, a real element of my, of my previous records in there with the work that Tony did. And, but the basis of it, you know, obviously sounds like a Mark Nevers record. So I think I, I got a the best of both worlds in that in that regard. Would you No, I don't want somebody new. We don't want somebody new.